Hello and welcome back to Where the Demon Lurks. We will be continuing where we left off on Lucian's route. Mostly because of Lucian's route was, you know, recently updated. <laughs> also, uh, as part of this update, uh, Fortis got his completed sprite. And he's looking rather yummy. <laughs> Hopefully he does appear in this um, update, because, you know, so you guys could see it. But anyways, um... I actually don't know what's going to happen, so let's see, you know, what happens. Hey, you hear a familiar voice somewhere out of reach. King. Hey. The voice comes in like a crashing tide before receding away from the edge of your consciousness. Your senses are numb and unbothered. A new sensation emerges, a growing tightness that pushes down on your chest soon accompanied by an aching weight that breaks your stasis. Wake up! Your eyes flutter open. Huh? Lucy? It takes a minute for your eyes to readjust to your lit room. Lucian's face comes into clarity. The angel's nose is alarmingly close to yours as he sits directly on top of you. It's Lucian. You were mumbling that mortal's name in your uncomfortable slumber, tossing and turning. Oh, was I? Sorry. You drape your arms over your eyes. What time is it? About an hour to midnight. Ugh, I can't believe I slept that long. Neither could I, particularly the fact that you need to sleep at all. Lucian pulls himself back and stands. You follow suit with a heavy groan. Hey, sleep is great. Don't knock it till you try it. It's a waste of time. By the way, your home, it's... He spins his wrist, trying to come up with the right words to say. Small? Dilapidated, more like it. Ugh, it's a decent place for a convenience store clerk's salary, you know. Hmm... I see your finances are well spent. His eyes trail off to the pile of video game cases stacked haphazardly in the corner of the room. Your shoulders droop under the weight of Lucian's judgmental gaze. That's not important. It's my money. I can do what I want with it. How the mighty have fallen. It looks like you spent your years on Earth collecting junk. What is this? Lucian pulls out a jar with a figurine in it. Ah! It's nothing. It's just a joke. I was showing to King. It doesn't mean anything. You try to shake the toy out of the jar, but it keeps getting snagged at the neck. The urge to smash the thing on the floor is palpable, but just as you look about the room for a place to chuck it, you catch the angel shaking his head. Defeated, you bury the jar underneath the beanbag topped with a pile of unwashed work clothes. Well, Kobu... Since you're fine, I'll return to my guard duties. Guard duties? What's up with that? You didn't really expect me to just sit around while you slept, did you? I've been using my powers to set up protective charms around the apartment. Oh, thanks, man. Sounds like an exhausting job. <sighs> A few dozen charms is nothing for an angel of my caliber. He says that but upon looking closer you notice his entire torso is drenched in sweat. He isn't fooling anyone. Uh, hey, it's late. Why don't I cook us something to eat before you go on watch duty? Eating is for mortals. You know we don't need it. Hang on a minute. Aren't you borrowing someone's body? No, this is my own. And you haven't been eating or drinking since you got here? Nobody ever questioned that? It's not like I stopped to talk to the locals. I was too busy searching for you. And now you found me. You'll stick out like a sore thumb in a town if people see you avoiding food like the plague. Lucian throws his nose up in the air. Preposterous! I'm God's best angel. I don't need to put up an act, and I most certainly don't need food. Hey, who's the demon lord here? G Fine. But when Gary asks you, you had better give me a glowing appraisal for being so receptive to your needs. You shake your head. Just sit right there. I'll get us something. 
Sauntering over to the kitchen, you let out a long yawn. The sleep was not enough to refresh you completely. You peruse the cabinets, contemplating what to make. Something instant would be easy. Your hand reaches for the cupboard and you pull out a little silver kettle and a cup of instant noodles, miso flavored. The gentle bubbling noise of boiling water dulls your senses. After all that's happened, the normalcy of cooking offers you a brief respite. A few minutes later, you walk out of the kitchen, a piping hut cup in hand. You motion him to join you in sitting on the floor. Here, eat this. He reaches to take the spork and cup from you. What's this? It's instant noodles. Considering you haven't eaten anything before, I picked out something mild for you. Miso flavor. He raises the cup and sniffs around the rim. I smell seaweed, some spring onion, and something else I can't put my finger on. Oh, quit smelling it and eat. The noodles are going to get soggy. This still feels ridiculous to do. It's one of the best ways to blend in with everyone here. Plus, it'll keep your energy up. Not sure how it works for our kind, but it's fun and feels good. Lucian takes a deep breath, and his shoulders fall. Fine, but if I get sick from this, it's on you. Dipping the spork into the hot cup, he pulls out a healthy amount of noodles and slurps them down. Lucian's eyes seem to widen and shine. His disinterest and expression nearly breaks into a smile until he catches you looking at him. He swallows. Ahem. You said this was miso? Yeah, pretty tasty, right? Lucian averts your gaze while silently taking a sip of the broth. I guess the mortals have made more amusing discoveries since they first found fire. And that's the cheap stuff. Wait till you try something from a real cafe. Lucian continues to eat the noodles in silence, but his tail would wag ever so often against the floor, producing short but quick audible tapping noises. Your heart feels lighter, but at the same time your eyelids are still struggling to stay open. Where's your food? Oh, uh, I didn't realize I ran out of cup noodles. It's okay, I'm not that hungry. A white lie, there are more in your cupboard, but you don't need Lucian to worry about your loss of appetite. He holds out his cup of noodles to you. Eat. But I made that for- You need this more than me. Eat. You said so yourself. This thing helps to keep your energy up. The angel's sudden gesture surprises you. Uh, thanks. You take the cup of noodles from him and take a bite. At first, it's a struggle to swallow the food. The mood just isn't there. But you push through. Slowly, the taste of miso fills your mouth. The warmth of the invigorating soup gives you new life as it flows down into your stomach. You continue to eat, the soft sound of Lucien's tail flapping accentuating your meal. A few minutes pass. Ah, I needed that. Alright, I'm gonna head out and keep watch. You just rest up. Come morning, I'll let you know what we need to do. Okay, thanks. I'll just lie here for a bit before going to bed again. Lucian stands up and leaves you to your thoughts. Outside, the cool night breeze blows against the angel's fur. It's almost time for the meeting. He looks around to make sure he's alone before climbing onto the handrail of the balcony. His hair and ears float ever so slightly, as though carried by an updraft. He steps forward but remains suspended in midair. A pair of white wings sprout from his back. Looking upwards, he begins his ascent at a steady pace. It's not long before the angel picks up speed and zooms upwards past the apartment roof and towards the clouds. The sound of rushing wind fills his ears. Yet before he could graze the clouds, the pull of gravity brings him back down. Wah! Lucian plummets back to Earth. Fly! 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 Lucian concentrates all his mental faculty into reactivating his powers. Just as the apartment roof comes into view, his wings reactivate again, and he manages to halt his fall. He glides down onto the apartment tile rooftop, nearly tripping as he lands. His breathing is erratic. What? What's going on with my powers? He looks at his trembling hands and clutches them tightly. 
the angel stands in silence for a minute before taking one long breath. This is just a little setback. He promptly tidies up his hair and straightens his shirt. Nothing I can't handle. The dog snaps his fingers and a bright yellow ring forms right above his head. Lucien drags the halo to his front. He taps the left side of the halo and it begins to ring. Okay, stay calm, sound confident, make a good impression. Just say hello with confidence. Hello, Lord Gary, I... The halo connects to the other person on the line. Go for Gary. Yes, uh, hello, hi Gary, Sir Lord, I have a report to make. Whoa, 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 cool your jets there. Who am I talking to? Lucian's mind goes blank for a second, but he manages to recompose himself. Uh, right, sorry. It's me, Lucian. Lucian? Um, Lucian from the kitchen department? No, I'm Lucian, the angel you sent to find. The volume of Lucian's voice drops. Kobu. Oh, right. My bad, man. I've just been swamped with all these commissions to draw. Listen to this. One soul wants to experience what it's like to be a superhero that saves a city with the power of accounting. I was like, that's new, I guess. Never tried a superhero with powers in accounting before. I got it already, but the customer didn't like it. Gary laughs heartily, and the halo jiggles in tandem. The soul gave me notes to change it. But whoops, I did it all in the same layer. Joke's on me, I guess. My lord. You do great work. They should appreciate the time and energy you put into each blueprint. Thanks, Lucien. Anyway, I'm going off topic and we... Uh, what were we talking about? Right, that. Is anyone around you? No, aside from the landlord, this apartment building only has Kobu here. This area is mostly deserted. Good, you found him. How was my favorite demon? He's heavier and highly uncooperative. Gary chuckles. At least he sounds like he's eating right. What else? It's just one problem after another, my lord. There's been an attack here by agents from the underworld. A mortal was taken as hostage and Kobu wants to save him. A mortal? What do you intend to do about that? Personally, I don't think it's a big deal. We'll save the mortal when we infiltrate the underworld. We go in, get the jump on Vendrake, and take him out. So the mission goes first, then. Always, my lord. Be discreet as best as you can. It's not a matter of if Vendrick will find out that we're helping Kobu, but a matter of when. And when that happens, I have to disregard any connections you have with our company. I cannot risk another war between our two sides. I understand, my lord. Anything for up above. Thank you, Lucian. So, what else can you tell me about the area you're in? It's an anomaly of a town, my lord. There are ghosts and exorcists running about. Do we have any souls with information about this place? I'd like to be prepared. Sure, let me look it up. What's the town's name? Gibbleton. <laughs> uh, Lord Gary? Sorry, I opened a funny video by mistake. Ah. Uh, mental note to self. Find out what video Gary finds funny so that I can find more for him. Interesting. It would seem that we don't have a single soul from that town. What? What does that mean? Oh, here's an interesting memo. Kibbleton is labeled as a red zone by the underworld. And a red zone is? I wish I could tell you, but my predecessor didn't write anything else other than red zone. Angels and demons advise to stay away. No souls can be collected from this area. Try asking Kobu, see what he knows about it. Right. And what about the status of finding the underworld gate? Good news on that part. The halo detected the energy presence of a gate in this town, but I haven't pinpointed its specific location. A gate in a red zone area? Peculiar, don't you think? I uh, wouldn't know. Are the two related? It's just an underworld gate isn't something someone would build for the fun of it. Be careful. Have you noticed anything unusual happening to you? Um. Lucian shuffles his feet. 
he struggles to swallow as he finds the right words to say. I've maybe noticed my wings aren't working right just now. Lucian. It's fine, it's fine. You have my word, I won't fail. Lucian bites his lower lip. The brief seconds of silence from Gary's side is tantamount to awaiting the guillotine from coming down. Well, I trust you have it under control, and I hope to hear good news during our next call. Lucian breathes a sigh of relief. Thank you, Lord Gary. And Lucian? Yes? Good job. Lucian's eyes beam brightly. His tail wags with so much energy it could practically fly off. The call ends and the halo disappears. Yes! His heart is jumping for joy, and so is he. Bouncing from left to right, the only thing that occupies Lucian's thoughts is God's compliment. Whatever is making that noise, shut up! Lucian stops his little happy ceremony and tries to recompose himself. Nearly forgot myself there. Back to my patrols. Lucian floats back down and continues his duties for the rest of the night. The next day, you awaken before your alarm rings. You sit up from the bed and begin your routine, like clockwork. The siblings who took over your shift would be expecting you soon. After getting dressed and downing a can of coffee, you head out. Good morning, Kobu. Up early and ready to face battle. Oh, hey. Morning to you too. I'm gonna go to work. Excuse me? Work at the convenience store? It's almost my shift. I switched mine with Mike and Anne yesterday. Lucian frowns. I'm going to pretend this is your attempt at a light-hearted joke. We have more serious things to attend to. Crossing your arms, you glare at Lucian, unamused. I know what we need to do, alright? But this is important too. If you want to keep using my unit as a base of operations, I need the cash to pay rent. Speaking of, you're paying half of it too. Me? Pay rent? That's what I said. I'm not letting an angel mooch off of me. You walk past Lucian. Wait! As the sun rises, the street lights flicker down. Your walk is serenaded by the rumbling cars and creaky cyclists who pass you by. You watch your feet as you walk. There's nothing you want to think about. All there is, is just feet. Expectantly, Lucian is walking next to you, not even trying to hide his exasperated size. You know he's trying to get your attention. Dude, I don't know if sighing that much is good for you. Well, forgive me, but I can't help but be disinterested in your attempts at cosplaying a mortal. Oh, you know what cosplaying is? I've overheard what other souls have mentioned. It's like being blinded by a lie so great that every fiber of your body and mind believes that you're someone else. No? What? No, absolutely no. No! Also, I'm not cosplaying. This is my job. You of all people should know how important fulfilling your duty is. Then what duty are you fulfilling by hiding here all these years? You stop walking and glare at the angel. He looks back at you unfazed. You know what? I'd rather we talk about your plan to get us to the underworld. Lucian smirks and tilts his nose upwards. Finally, a better use of our time. So after talking to Gary last night... You talked to Gary? Why wasn't I involved? You both continue walking to the store. Gary is busy running up above. Besides, he wants to keep everyone safe. The less he is directly involved in what we're doing, the less we risk a war with Vendrick. You frown. Somehow the idea that your only ally in this whole soul business is avoiding you does not sit right. So, what did you guys think of? We're sticking to the original plan. We'll find an underworld gate and use it to get you home. An underworld gate? You know about it? Eh. You extend a downward open palm while rocking it slightly. Either way, I've detected the presence of one in this town. That's... weird. Gary thought so too, but it doesn't change the fact that we need to find it, and I need your help to do that. After all, you've been around here long enough. That knowledge will finally be of some use. Huh. Well then, you'll have to wait till after my shift is over. What am I supposed to do until then? 
I don't know. I mean, you don't have to wait if you don't want to. Just go find the gate on your own first. And risk letting you getting attacked? Not a chance. I'm staying close. Fine, then just search near the store area, and we'll continue after work. I can't help for now. What about during lunchtime? My lunch is at 1pm, and that's like an hour long. I don't think we could find much in that time, even if we tried. Lucien shakes his head. You sigh. It just seems like there's no pleasing this angel. Your mind snaps back, and you remember that you have to handle the store all on your own. You rack your brain for a solution. Uh, hang on, why not work at the store with me? That way, you and I can keep the same schedule. Plus, I get someone to share the workload with me. Lucien scoffs. Now why would I want to do that? Even if I have to find work to pay your so-called rent, there should be a better job out there for me. It's not that bad. I mean, sure, sometimes the work can be tough. Like, I remember how some customers will ask for the craziest requests, like topping their bento boxes with candy before microwaving it. There's also having to get rid of the occasional drunk that wanders into the store during the night shift. They think that they can sleep inside, and then there's the hours of heavy lifting and sorting with barely enough pay. But all that matters is that you got a friend along for the ride with you and the knowledge that you'll eat enough to survive another month. So how about I- The angel is walking off in the opposite direction. I'll see you at lunch. And so your shift begins. Upon entering the store, the two siblings rush over to ask if King is okay. You recall that you made up a story that King had to leave the state due to a family emergency and that he would be uncontactable for a while. Mike and Anne are placated when you told them that King was fine and that he would be back soon. An empty promise that you hope will come true. With King's absence, the three of you decide to put up a sign looking for a new recruit to help with the work. Until then, you have to work through your shift on your own. A task made harder with the recent addition of your task as manager. The brother reassures you that King's guide will get you through it, and if there are any emergencies, he's a phone call away. He would only help with depositing the earnings of the day into the company bank account. You have no choice but to go along with the plan. Then the duo return home, leaving you in charge. You find King's guide lying on the counter. Caressing the cover, you feel the tough wrinkle of the paper King used to decorate it. You pick up the book and open the first page. There's a sticky note inside. I believe in you, King. Damn it, King. You feel tears building up, but you slap your cheeks to snap out of it. The time for crying will come later after King is saved. Throughout the first half of the day, you busily restock the shelves and learn to take inventory of what needs to be reordered. All the while, customers come and go, forcing you to juggle between stock take and service. Running yourself ragged, even your brief moments of peace are spent reading through the manual, unable to commit much to memory before your next interruption. Customer, hello, welcome to Sun- Oh. Oh, please do go on. Don't let me stop you from doing your job. What's up, Lucian? It's lunchtime. I'm here to report my findings. Is that late already? I'm beat and hungry. Can we talk about it over lunch? Lucian raises an eyebrow. Hmm, more mortal customs. How fun. Come on, I'm closing the store. After locking the store, you drag the reluctant angel to a nearby cafe. From the outside, the single-story cafe has a quaint, rustic feel to it. Ta-da! Six fam. Lucian looks at the shop sign, then back at you, his face deadpan as ever. The moment you step into the cafe, the smell of potatoes frying from the kitchen stirs your appetite. The lady dressed in a bright red dress approaches with two menus in her hand. Afternoon there! The lady is instantly drawn towards your angelic companion. You feel deja vu from your time at the supermarket sale. Did anyone ever tell you that you look like one of those magazine models? If you need work, I'm looking for an extra pair of hands to help me run the cafe. Er, no thank- You elbow Lucine in the stomach. <laughs> You're hiring? He'd love to. Maybe you can tell us more about it after lunch? She smiles warmly and doesn't seem to think too much about your reaction. Alright, right this way then, fellas. 
The waitress escorts you both to a nearby booth seat. You fellows want to look at the menu? Oh, sure. She hands you each a menu before readying a notepad and pencil that were tucked away in her apron. I'll have lunch, set A. Fish and chips with a glass of apple soda. What about you, handsome? Um, that's okay. I'm not one for eating. She puts her hands on her hips. You expect me to believe that you can maintain that build and that shiny coat of yours by skipping meals? I assure you, I'm built differently than the usual customers you get. And I assure you, my chef, Neil, has never cooked up a bad meal. Order something. If you don't like it, your meal's on me. Just do it, dude. You've got nothing to lose. Lucian sighs. Fine. Er, uh, give me whatever it is that he's having. Got it. Neil, give me two sets of A's. You wait until the lady is out of earshot to continue talking. See? That wasn't so bad. Huh. Let's not forget you also got a job offer. Not that it would do me much good. Look around. This cafe would not survive through the year in this state. Glancing around, you notice that there's only a handful of customers. It's an uneasy sight since it's peak lunch hour. We can worry about that later. You need a job and a piece of advice? Cool it with the whole mortal thing. People will think you're weird if you refer to them as that. But that's what they are. Even so, people don't acknowledge that. Anyways, we're going off topic. About the Underworld Gate, there's still no signs of it during my short reconnaissance. No biggie, we'll go looking for it later. How? You hold off your finishing your sentence when you see the waitress returning with your drinks. Uh, thanks. She smiles and heads back to the kitchen. Where were we? Oh, right. Uh, how are you searching for this gate in the first place? I use this. He snaps his finger and a halo appears above him. What? Lucien grabs the halo and shows it to you. This is my halo. What are you doing? Put that away or people will see. You try to keep your voice down while swatting at the air, signaling to the angel to quickly put it aside. Oh, don't worry. Gary made sure that this device is not visible to mortals. Plus... Whenever it's active, it creates a special cone around us that masks our conversation. Huh. What are they hearing then? I want to have a baby. That's great. Who's going to be the mother? You. Dios mio. <laughs> uh, just turn it off. It'll just cause us more problems if we get ourselves in trouble over our misunderstanding. All right. Then we'll just have to be more careful, and you need to speak softer. He taps the halo to disable its filtering function. Regardless, we can use the halo to find the gate later. It'll beep more frequently the closer we are to it. Sounds simple enough. Anything else? Yes. Lucian leans in close, staring you down intensely. I need to pick your brain on something. Okay, shoot. What do you know about this town? Pretty much the same thing as they put in their travel brochures online. Kibbleton's a small town that's trying to revitalize itself, so more people will come and stay here. That's all? There's nothing weird about this place? Well, there's that one cult and a gang running around the town. But other than that, I haven't noticed much. What about this town's status as a red zone? Oh, what about that? That just means demons aren't supposed to be here. This town's souls are unable to reach the underworld. And that would be because... I don't know. That's all I can remember from those boring old files. Kobu, I need more than that. Have you been to any other red zones? Yeah, two others. A city and another countryside. And did anything strike you as out of the ordinary? Not really. I think some mega corporation was in the city. I seem to recall almost everyone worked for them, and the countryside town was super traditional. They worship some kind of dragon god, which I mean that's nice and all, but eh, the farm life was not for me. Lucian leans back in his seat and crosses his arms. What about you? Have you been in a red zone before? This is my first time. I've only been on Earth for a few months. The halo never took me to a red zone when it was pinpointing your location. 
Uh, alright. Then why exactly are you so worried about these red zones? It's just... I feel like my powers are diminished while I'm here. I cannot explain why. Are you joking? How are we going to defend ourselves from another freelancer attack? Don't worry about it. I can still take on any two-bit demon that comes our way. You narrow your eyes. I can do it all right. Rest assured, you have the finest angel on your side. You're not 100% confident in Lucian's words, but you keep that to yourself. Starting a quarrel over these feelings will get you nowhere. Reluctantly, you decide to worry about this when the time comes. The waitress interrupts both of you with your orders. A plate of two fish fillets coated with flour, fried to a beautiful golden brown. Accompanying the fish is a side of crispy shoestring fries on a bed of a crisp green salad. The smell of food instantly eases the tension and our worries melt away. There's just something special about the food in this cafe that always makes you feel better. She also places two ramekins on the table, one for tartar sauce and the other mayonnaise. Eat up, boys! She smiles eagerly at Lucian. And if you like this, imagine getting free food every day just by being part of the team. Fascinating, but I assure you I won't be easily persuaded by some cooked fish. He cuts into the fish and takes a bite. Oh! His face contorts into a look of pure bliss, then horror when he realizes the sound he just made. That's just... He looks at you, but you're just enjoying the show. The waitress giggles. The food was hot, that's all. Sure thing, golden boy. If you like that, you should try it with some sauce. She points to the ramekins in front of you both. A jolly melody starts playing from her apron. Oh, one sec. She pulls out her phone and you swear her face turns pale white. I'm sorry, I gotta take this. The waitress rushes off to the kitchen before you have a chance to thank her. You decide not to pay her sudden disappearance any heed. Lucian takes another cut from his fillet and observes a piece of fish in front of him. He dips it into the tartar sauce and mayo before eating. This time he maintains his cool composure that you hear the sound of Lucian's tail thrashing against the seat. You shake your head slightly and chow down with Lucian. Come to the end of the meal, the waitress returns with the bill. So, how was it, Golden Boy? Hmm, it was... acceptable. Gah, the food was great as usual. Compliments to the chef. I'm happy to hear that. I'll pass it on to him. Now, if you work here, our chef can whip you up something tasty anytime. I promise the pay is fair too. Why are you looking for a new hire, by the way? No offense, but things look a little... Uh... Oh, I know. My little shop has been struggling against the older ones that have been here for years. So I've been thinking that my shop needs a gimmick, like... Feel like royalty with a handsome staff at Six Fan. Handsome staff? I thought it's just you here. Of course not. Neil's just as magnetic looking as you are. Hey, Neil! Get out here! A single black hand extends out from the kitchen window and waves a finger back at the waitress, telling her off. Oh, he's shy, but a nice guy. So, what do you say? Hmm. Lucien puts a finger to his chin as he thinks. He looks at you as though seeking your opinion on the matter. You give him a thumbs up. Fine, I guess it won't be too bad to work here, mainly because it saves me the time I would spend looking for some other menial job. Manners. Here's my resume. Lucien pulls out a stack of papers from his right pocket and hands it to the stunned waitress. His little magic trick nearly causes you to choke on a fry. She looks at the documents in her hands with stunned silence. What? You carry that around with you? Where I come from, a chance for a promotion can come any time. So we've got to be ready. Oh, wow. You worked in a hotel before? That's perfect. I'll give the rest a look through, and I'll call you when it's time to start work. Just like that? No interview? Naturally, my talents are undeniable. Sure, let's go with that. You sigh, relieved that at least rent will be easier for a bit, but you also wonder if Lucien will fit in well without you being there. 
Either way, as your lunchtime approaches its end, you return to the convenience store. Lucien hangs about in the back room until your shift is over. Come nightfall, the search for the gate begins again. Sitting in an elevator, King is bound and gagged from head to toe. The soreness around his butt is replaced with a dull but numbing pain from staying still. Each time the elevator changes direction, King lurches from side to side. The room itself is seemingly chasing after some far-off destination. King rests his head against the cool metallic wall, too tired to continue his struggle against his bindings. His eyes rise upwards to the demon who has his back turned to him. Mm -mm. The dark bindings along his nose start to curve further around King's face, with the tip resembling a dog's head, peeking at the corner of his eyes. Bro, he says you have a nice ass. Mm. Fortis looks over his shoulder and flashes a smile. Thanks! Glad someone noticed the effort that went into training my glutes! The demon flexes his bubbly posterior. King shakes his head frantically. Mm. He says to ungag him. Not a chance. I have a hard enough time figuring out what to do without you yelling in my ears. Mm, mm, mm. Dude says he won't talk much. He just doesn't like me stuffing his nose. Hey, that's mean. It's not like I like being wrapped around you with your, uh, soft fleece. It feels weird touching a mortal. Fortis turns around. Just ignore him. He can't do anything to you. Mm. Bro, bro, he's saying he's going to lick me. Ew. Relax, that's not... Eh. Urgh. He's doing it, bro. I can feel his slimy tongue spreading his mortal saliva on me. Fortis shakes his head and lets out a low growl. Fine, fine, return. The bindings on King's mouth unravel and slither up Fortis' arm. King's jaw drops as he watches the previous sentient shadow revert into a lifeless tattoo. Fortis points at the stunned alpaca. Now zip it up or he's going back on you. Fortis points to his right forearm. Exhausted, King presses his face against the cool metal surface beside him. Huh. I wish I could see where we're going. The spot where his head meets the metal swirls open, granting him a window to the space outside. Peering through the portal-like spot, he sees portraits floating around a murky abyss. Like the planets circling the sun, the paintings appear to move in the same manner, but what they are circling around remains to be seen. The alpaca shifts his attention back to the demon. Fortis keeps mumbling to himself. He intently peruses the elevator control panel, indecisively reaching out for buttons before changing his mind. Where are we going? This elevator ride feels like it's been going on for too long. Just give me a minute. I'm thinking where to put you. Maybe... here? He presses the combination of buttons and the elevator comes to a halt. The door opens to a bathroom full of naked demons showering. Crap! Sorry, dudes! Fortis rapidly presses another button so that the doors can close and begins moving again. The elevator jolts, bringing back King's motion sickness with it. Did that guy have, like, three... Yes, and don't ask. Now, how about here? While Fortis inputs the next combination, King leans to the side and squints to see the buttons. To his dismay, the panel is decorated with symbols beyond his comprehension. It's not long before the elevator comes to a stop again. The door opens to a desert plain. There's only one thing that stands out. A silent mass of people huddled around something. The alpaca blinks. Before him are beings on their knees, looking up with reverence. The outline of their incorporeal bodies is barely maintained as the wisps of their essence flow back and forth like smoke in the wind. A mixture of shock and fascination dawns on King as he realizes what these ethereal beings are souls. There's something unnerving about the whole display. King gulps as his eyes slowly trail up to the very front of the crowd, a stone sculpture. The stone sculpture has its back turned against everyone, but something already feels amiss. What's that sound? King starts to hear a beating sound escalating with each passing second. The drumming sound that fills his ears is none other than the alpaca's own heartbeat. His eyes remain fixated to the statue, unable to look away, not out of awe, but fear. 
A possibility so grim, so terrible may come to pass if he looks away. The fear grips King's entire core as tears start to stream down his eyes. The metal doors slide shut, obscuring the statue entirely. King gasps and blinks rapidly over his dry eyes. Hmm, might be a bit too intense for this pipsqueak. What room was that? It's one of the mildest physical torture chambers. I thought it could work for you. What was that thing? I couldn't stop looking at it. Hmm, yes, that'd be the demon Akios. You don't want to find out what happens when the soul stops looking at them. What in the world made you think that that would be a safe place for me? I don't know, Akio seemed pretty popular with mortal souls. Your kind can't seem to take your eyes off of them. I don't think those souls have a choice in the matter. Fine, then I'll be using plan B. Fortis presses another series of buttons and the elevator opens up to a plain looking office space. Let's go. He pulls King up by his bindings and places the mortal on his shoulder. Being carried by a big strong man would be more fun if I was being held against my will. Fortis walks across the room and pulls out a pair of keys to open the pantry door. Once inside, he drops the alpaca on his butt and locks the room. Ow! If you're trying to bruise my peaches, you did a good job. Fortis extends his hands out and the bindings unravel. King gets up and scans the area. The place looks like an average looking pantry room, down to the distinctive smell. Well, Bendrek said to stuff you in a pantry, so here you are. I'm not getting paid enough to be looking for rooms. If you need a toilet, it'll be the door next to the sink. Over there's the coffee machine. Fortis goes on and on, but King is lost in his thoughts. His eyes fall upon the key ring dangling out of the demon's jacket pocket. With that key, he could escape the pantry and make a run for the elevator. He could go home. He could warn Kobu that Vendrick's coming. The sound of Crimson Portal ripping open in the middle of the room derails King's train of thought. Wait, you're leaving? Enjoy your afterlife. Fortis heads for the portal. Wait! What now? I mean, what am I going to do about food? Like I said, just eat whatever's in the fridge. King walks over and opens the fridge. He instantly reels back. Is that moldy cheese? And oh my god, there's an eyeball in that container of leftovers. I can't eat these. Fortis rolls his eyes. Come on, food is food. It's not like you're trying to build muscle or anything. Ping pong ping. Hello, hello. Can you guys hear me? The cat general's voice comes clear through the PA system. Amari? That sounds like the voice of the demon with all those arms. Why is he making an announcement here? Yeah, I see you guys on my monitor. Figured you'd bring him to the pantry. Really? How do you even know I'd bring him here? Simple. I infer that you'd either take Vendrick's worth literally, or you'd realize that there's no safer place for him but here. Oh, really now? You were that sure that those were the only things that I would have done? There is a silence that drags on for a few seconds before Amari responds. That, and I bugged the mortal when you were walking out with him. Yeah. Typical Lamari. A small spider bot, no bigger than a grain of rice, leaps off King's shoulder, unnoticed, and crawls up the ceiling to sit on the PA speaker. It glows red. Cameras are on. Hi, mortal. Uh, hi. King waves hesitantly in the direction of the PA system. Anyways, the alpaca is right. You've got to fulfill his basic needs if we plan to send him back to Earth in one piece. Then you do it, if you're such an expert. I'm already on it. Kobu previously wanted to acquire mortal snacks without going through the hassle of traveling to the mortal plane. So he requested that I build a processor that could churn out the things that he wanted. I just need to make sure that it's working right, and check if it still has that bug whereby it explodes when coming into contact with water. Ugh. Right, and... And that means I need entertainment too? You're a prisoner. What do you need entertainment for? Well... The alpaca puffs his chest and tries to look intimidating. He steps closer to the larger demon and pokes him in the chest. Well... Wow, this is so solid. King retracts his hand and tries to start over. Well, I'll go crazy if I just remain stuck in this room with nothing to do. At least get me something to read. 
Fortress huffs and growls. Fine, then read this! He grabs a nearby jar of coffee powder and shoves it towards the alpaca's snout. King slaps Fortis's hands away. Hello, honey. Reading the label off a jar of coffee powder isn't stimulating. But what was I expecting? You meatheads down here aren't the same as the ones up on Earth. You're all about the gains. Excuse me? I happen to be very well read. I'm not the second strongest demon general just by getting by my own strength alone. Number two. I flush a number two down my toilet every morning, mister. Ooh. King and Fortis look sternly at the PA system. Sorry, carry on. Fortis's entire body tenses as a result. His body heat skyrockets, making the alpaca take a few steps back in order to keep his fleece from catching fire. Listen here, you are in no position to make demands. You're going to be a good little mortal and just sit here and take what I give you. They both leer at each other, neither budging on their stance. If you're going to leave me to be bored out of my brains, I'll go on a hunger strike. Oh yeah? Well, this meathead has created chasms with his arms. I'm sure I can open that pretty mouth of yours and make you eat. Do it and I'll bite your finger. Ha! As if you could hurt me. I might just like it. The sounds of crunching popcorn echoes through the room from the speaker system. Amari! Oh, whoops, forgot I had my mic on. Fortis turns back to the alpaca. Wispy steam emanates from Fortis as the sweat dripping down the demon's fists evaporate from his intense body heat. He takes in one deep breath and his body temperature drops. Bah. He closes his eyes for a while then opens them again. Sport magazines okay for you? Okay, but I'm going to need a box of tissues if you're going to make me read that. What? For the inspirational sports story segments, you know, the parts where they talk about how they got into sports and all that? Right. Fortis shakes his head and leaves through the portal. Boy, he's grumpy, huh? King sighs loudly and places his hands on his hips. I'm sorry, Amari, was it? Yep, yep. You sound like a nice... demon. Can I have some privacy so that I can rest? Oh, don't worry. These recordings are merely for research purposes. Come on, what if I need to do some private things? I encourage that completely. Go for it. I want you to do whatever comes naturally to you. Then I'll smash your bug. I welcome you to try. It would give me valuable data for the next model. While you do so, let me play some relaxing music to go with it. I'll be there soon with the food machine. Have fun! Gentle music starts playing from the spider bot. King sighs. Defeated, he walks over to the nearby chair and sits down. Things would be easier without a camera watching him, but his time in the convenience store has long taught him how to avoid such surveillance. Now, how do I steal the key from that walking bulldozer? To be continued. Oof. Actually, that was shorter than I thought it would be. But yeah, um... So at least King is fine, and I should save because I always forget to save nowadays. Um... So, yeah. I'm gonna go back. I'm pretty sure that they have credit stuff. Do they? Yeah. So, King is fine, thankfully. And although Fortis and his new sprite and all his glory um, probably wants to um, throw King through a window, he at least has some restraints. <laughs> um, but, yeah. I'm pretty sure eventually, if he if King keeps it up, he's gonna end up getting killed by Fortis. And as well-meaning as Amari is, I'm pretty sure that the only reason that they're being so nice is because they're just using King as a like little guinea pig. It would be kind of nice if through King, the generals, or at least these two. Um, being Fortis and Amari would sort of kind of get a picture of what's going on with Kobu and might be a bit more receptive to him staying away or maybe find a way to actually help him return as the king of the underworld. Also, it's kind of funny that Lucian is very much a dog. In every, you know, sense of the word, he 
he wants your attention. He has to, like, stick right by you. Or else he gets sad or cranky. Especially when he doesn't get his way. And when he, you know, he gets a treat or something that he likes, even if he doesn't, like, out want, outright want to show it, you know, he, he wags the tail, which is, you know, what dogs like to do when they're happy and stuff like that. I keep laughing, Omar Alvarado, that's Omar. <laughs> Every single time that passes by, I'm gonna laugh. That's never gonna change. Anyways, um, but yeah. So, it's kind of nice to see Fortis's sprite, so yeah. It's very hot. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, he's hot. Kobu is cute, and he's definitely dateable material, but Fortis is like the guy that you want to go after. <laughs> but anyways. Anywho, but yeah, so what do you guys think? Um, so as far as I know, right now Lucian is the only one with uh content relating to his story. And um the boar and Toast. I forget what the boar's name is. Uh, but the exorcist and Toast the ghost, the hyena ghost. Um, their routes are just barely starting. So I don't know if I'm going to do their routes. Um, if and when they update, I will play it myself and then see if it offers, you know, anything that's different from the Lucian route. Um, I would like to do Toast's route because he's the hyena and, you know, hyena solidarity. But, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. It kind of sucks that he's like the, the last one to get updated because I think it was Lucian and then the boar. I think it's Boris. I want to call him Boris. Okay. Um, and then Toast. So that's how it gets updated, I think. I'm not sure. Might just be talking out of my ass. Anyways, um, but yeah. So, you know, comments, what you think is gonna happen. It is interesting that not just demons, but angels are supposed to stay away from the cities. And I think it has something to do with, um, what, uh, Kobu had mentioned where that one farming village has a dragon deity. So, obviously, souls go to the dragon. The other place has like a mega corporation in there so i'm assuming the souls go to the mega corporation because they all work for them so it's like basically the company owns your soul and i'm assuming in this town there's something else going on that's keeping the souls from being able to pass on either to the underworld or to heaven it also diminishes the powers of um demons and angels because the, if you recall the assassin that was supposed to go after uh, Kobu, his meat suit was, you know, degrading. And uh, apparently Lucian is losing his powers, or at least they're diminishing greatly to the, to the point where he has trouble putting up charms and to the point where he can't fly. But yeah. Anywho, so yeah. Uh, thank you all for watching slash listening. If you would like to play where the demon lurks yourself and do some of the other routes yourself, um, you can find it over on Itch. And if you would like to subscribe to their Patreon and get early access to builds as they come up, you can, you know, subscribe to their Patreon. And if you would like to follow them on Twitter, then I will post a link down in the description along with the Patreon link. And I guess that's it for now, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.